Okay, um, in this video, we're going to use the trig form of the uh, beta function and its relation to the gamma function to solve these two types of trigonometric uh, integrals. Both of them are a pretty straightforward application of the beta function. Um, let's start with this one here. So we have got the integral 0 to pi over 2 square root cotangent of theta d theta and let's rewrite it using our basic definition of the cotangent of theta that would be the cosine of theta divided by the sine of theta d theta and this would be raised to the one-half power and we can take the sine of theta out of the denominator and then we have sine of theta to the minus one-half this is downstairs times the cosine of theta to the plus one half d theta. This is supposed to be a minus sign here. And let's compare this now to our beta function. The limits are okay, of course. It's zero to pi over two. The sine of theta is raised to a power minus one half. Cosine of theta is raised to a different exponent d theta. Uh, it has everything it needs except for 2 in front of it. So if we're going to convert this to a beta function, the first thing we have to remember is it's going to be 1 half times that beta function. And let's see, what would the beta function be? Um, 2m minus 1 has to equal minus 1 half. So you can figure out what m is. So, bring the, oh, that's a plus one, minus one half, that's plus one half, so 2m equals plus one half, m is one fourth, and then here we have 2n minus one, that's equal to plus one half. So 2n, bringing this over to here, would equal 3 halves, or n will equal 3 fourths. So this integral here equals 1 half of the beta function of 1 fourth, 3 fourths. Uh, like we said, a pretty straightforward application. And let's see, if we wanted to try to get a numerical expression for this integral, using this relation here, we would say, well, it's equal to one half the gamma function of one fourth times the gamma function of three fourths divided by the gamma function of one fourth plus 3 fourths, that's the gamma function of 1, which is just 1. So there it is, that would be this integral expressed in terms of the gamma function. And to get a numerical answer for this, um, we can't go any further because we know what the gamma function of 1 half is. That's the square root of pi. And remember, we used our formula before, like this, equals n times the gamma function of n. If we do that, well, we can derive easily enough the gamma function of 3 halves, or the gamma function of 5 halves, or the gamma function of 7 halves, but there's no way we have to determine the gamma function of one fourth. There are, however, tables you can look it up in. 
and you can get the approximate value of the gamma function of one fourth and the gamma function of three fourths. So of course take the product, divide it by two, and you have approximate numerical value for this integral. And that's it. We don't have anything more to say about that. So let's quickly move on to the next integral here. Here we have the integral 0 to pi over 2 cosine to the 6 theta d theta. Um, we don't have any sine term in here like we have in our beta function definition, but maybe we can just fake it. Say, so, well, this would be the go zero to pi over two times the sine of theta to the zero power times the cosine of theta to the sixth e theta. And here we have the sine of theta is raised to an exponent of zero. Well, we can say 2m minus 1 equals 0 and find out what m has to be. And here we have the cosine of theta to the 6th. So let's see if we can get this in terms of a beta function. We're missing a 2, so it's going to have to be 1 half times whatever that beta function is. So 2m minus 1 has to be 0. m will be 1 half. 2n minus 1 has to equal 6. So 2n equals 7. n equals 7 halves. So you're going to get this integral here is equal to 1 half the beta function of 1 half 7 halves. Again, a pretty straightforward application. And if we want to, we could take the extra steps here and compute a numerical value for this. We would have this integral here, cosine to the 6 theta d theta. That will equal, again using a relationship here, that would be equal to one half gamma function of one half times the gamma function of seven halves divided by the gamma function of one half plus seven halves. That's the gamma function of four. And we know what this is. And that's the square root of pi. And again, by repeated application of this formula, like we've done before, we can determine the gamma function of 7 halves. That is equal to 5 halves times 3 square root of pi divided by 4. So we can say so this will equal one half or two. This is the square root of pi. Seven halves, that's the square root of pi times three times five. Divided by two times four. And the gamma function of four, that's three factorial. So we'll have this. And looks like these are going to cancel. So up here we'll have 5 pi divided by 2 times 2 is 4 times 4 is 16 times 2 is 32. So again, we would say this. The cosine to the sixth of theta d theta 
that will equal 5 pi divided by 32. So again, just a couple of quick examples to show you that once you're familiar with the uh, beta function and its trigonometric form, it can be a very handy tool in solving different types of integration problems. But, okay, um, that's it for now. Come back, we have time, join us, we'll see if we can solve some more problems.